Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to your weekly dose of newsy infotainment. Let's be treasonable. Coming to you, well, live on tape, digitally, I suppose, from the luxurious studios of Radio Titans in Los Angeles. With your cognitive dissidents on the panel this week, I am your host, Dr. David Robinson. Joining us is the Black Voice of Reason, Mr. Time and Ship. Uh, power to the people. It's good to be here on this Saturday morning. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, sitcom writer and meme generator extraordinaire, Mr. Josh Greenberg. Hello. Hello. Nice to be here. Good, good to have you here. And uh, political consultant, gadfly man about town, Ernie Powell, joining us as a special guest today. Good to be back. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Uh, so as as we were talking about earlier, uh, when Donald Trump was campaigning, he said you're going to win so much you're going to be tired of winning. Who knew he was talking about the Democrats? We've got two failed Muslim travel bans, a failed health care plan, which uh, we're going to talk about in just a minute more. But uh, this week it was decided that, uh, well, fine, the Muslims can fly, but we're not going to let them have fun. A uh, new ban on electronics larger than smartphones uh, on eight airlines that are based in uh, mu- Muslim-majority countries. So uh, my question is, uh, if we aren't trying to eliminate al-Qaeda and ISIS, is the plan to cripple them by making them squint? <laughs> I, as I was uh, going to say, I mean, this, this gets up right up there with the... Uh you know, you can't take bottled water on the plane either. You know, I mean, that's what, what's next? We just, you know, we'll just be all sitting there. They took our pillows. We don't have pillows. We don't have blankets. <laughs> we can't eat food. There's no, the, you can't do pillows and blankets now? Some planes do not allow, you know, you have to buy them. If you want anything, you have to oh, buy it. Okay. You have to, I mean, but you basically take it away. They used to be free, but you can't, uh, you know, you can't uh, do that. So I, I don't know. I, he's, he's, uh, he's not... He's not batting. He's not batting a thousand right now. He's not doing very well with his little uh, different bands on everything. I think if you want to uh, radicalize someone, no entertainment for sixteen <laughs> hours. <laughs> that uh, that will make anyone crazy. I I recently I, I was in Vietnam a few weeks ago, and uh, the flight back, the the entertainment options that they provided were. Not not so great. There there were some you know uh, uh, they had uh, some good movies and uh, a couple TV shows, but for the most part, no, it, yeah. it just not not an option. Uh, how national flights? I hadn't flown internationally in in quite some time. Uh, they they did provide pillows and blankets. There you go. And uh, all, almost as much food as a Jewish grandmother. Yeah. You know <laughs> that that may have been the sleeping though. Just felt like every time they were putting food in my face. So. Okay. Talking about entertainment on flights, the only movie I saw coming back from Tokyo was I, I watched Hurt Locker two and a half times. Hmm. I've got the script. Getting better every time? Yeah, it did, actually. I, uh, I like to bring a light bright on flights with me. I, <laughs> I wonder if that's too large. Too. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, it, it is entertaining for kids of all ages. <laughs> But uh, speaking of, of uh, failed things that aren't entertaining, uh, the Republican health care bill, the American Health Care Act, was dead in the water uh, pretty much. Ernie, uh, you know, since we're, we're mostly smart asses with, uh, with an educated interest in politics and, and you're the guy who knows stuff, well, give us a little background. Uh, give us your insight. Well, I, I was part of the effort to, I was the ARP in California during Obama's first term, and we, ARP, endorsed the, uh, the legislation that ultimately became the um, Obamacare. And I remember the, the response. I remember the creation of the Tea Party. I remember the changes that happened in Congress that first cycle when in 2000, it was 2010, when um, Congress went back. The Democrats lost the majority to the Tea Party movement. There were something like 60 House seats that that flipped from Democrat to Republican, and so um, and I've heard for years, you know, the the protestations about how how B- Obamacare didn't work, the Affordable Care Act didn't work, and so I was really surprised at the at the public reaction and what I was happy about it. When you when you count the numbers, you know, there have been significant improvements 
in terms of coverage for children, coverage for women, coverage for for senior citizens, which is where I've worked for a lot of years to on on protection of senior citizen benefits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. and so and so it finally got to the point where um, people started to understand that, and they understood it in a much deeper way than I think anybody anybody would have prognosticated. I think you know, I mean, we were we were still what two weeks ago, you know, hearing hearing cries of get rid of Obamacare, but don't touch my ACA benefits. Well, there was a little bit of that, maybe more than. But they've had seven years. They've had seven years to come up with a new plan to fix whatever they were going to do. Why is it so hard, Ernie, to have medical insurance in our country? Why is it that people say, oh, I don't want socialism? Where Denmark was talking to, to uh, Dr. Davis, uh, Robinson about this, and I said, you know, here it is, Denmark. Yeah, they pay 60% in taxes, but they have free health care. And uh, you, you can talk to the, 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 the potent redneck, and he'll tell you, I don't want no socialism. But school for free. Their kids can go to college and, and, and get medical. And I don't know how good their medical is. Apparently, it must be really good for them to call them the number one, the happiest place in the world to live. And, at, yet, at least uh, the, the prescription drug pro, uh, yeah. programs are good. Yeah. Hmm. So and I, I, why can't we have it? Well, we're, we're, we're moving towards it. It's just taking longer than other countries. And, and the, but we're a superpower. We're, supposed to, they keep we're a superpower of this strange mix of market and government. And we have a strange sort of economic system that is both government and, um, and, and, private, and private sector. And so the reason it's taken so long is because um, those special interests that have had a lock on health care have done I – mean, I mean, the AMA opposed Social Security back in the 30s when Roosevelt – brought it the American Medical Association so the point of is the point is that there's always been this this uh, division in America around between corporate interests and the aim for profit versus the good of the people and and we've successfully overcome that the first time with Social Security and then Medicare in 1965 Medicare and Medicaid and finally I think you know um, enough people had been enrolled Enough people had seen the benefit, and when it came down to the bottom line is, are you willing to lose it? I mean, the numbers were staggering in terms of the harm that this bill was going to do. The first thing, that, I mean, the first thing that was that was evident from the research and the data was that there literally 17,000 people would die in the first year if this new bill had passed because the reason why is because 17,000 would die from 14 million losing their insurance in year one, 24 million um, in 10 years. Uh, well, I, I, I think this all begs the question uh, that, you know, as, as time and said, you know, the, the Republicans have been fighting this for seven years. That's, that's a lot of time to, to analyze the program, the ACA, as, as it passed. And and come up with uh, solutions, come up with fixes, but obviously they didn't. Uh, what what have they been doing all this time? <laughs> well, they've never had to govern. The problem that they faced in this in this current adventure is they never had to govern, mm-hmm. and so they could easily just throw um, throw grenades at the wall. Right. And 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 you're right. They voted to kill it sixty times since it passed. But they had nothing to replace. They had nothing to. They replace didn't have it. to. They didn't have to because they weren't governing. Right. In this case, you know, remember that their motto was um, uh, repeal and replace. Right. And, and so what, what hurt them the most was their, repl- was their replacement. There was two things that hurt them the most. Number one, they never anticipated the groundswell that would happen because w- one of the things that Republicans fear, and, and Newt Gingrich said this in, in the mid-'90s when they stopped the Clinton administration from passing – Healthcare reform. Remember, there was a huge emphasis. Right. It was called Hillary Care in those days. Right. But Newt Gingrich said, and it was a it was his own analysis of history, and he's right. When you create these benefits, at the same time you create constituencies that that protect those benefits. Mm-hmm. And so, and so they knew that if if the if if the foot was in the door, so to speak, and people wound up getting this benefit. Okay, that was affordable. That was that served them well. That protected them. 
that they would hold on to it. And that's why Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid have done so well, because constituencies grow from that. So it, it's as much a political calculation. Mm-hmm. In this case, what happened to them was um, you had a president who um, campaigned on repeal and replace, but he, but he, they did the public in a way to where the public felt learned learned what it was and felt comfortable about it. Number right. one and number two, it was such a bad piece of legislation. Right. I mean, people were gonna as a the replacement meant you got kicked off your you got kicked off your plan. The replacement meant that Medicare premiums right. would go would would triple better than triple. But, but premiums aren't... for fifty for fifty to sixty four year olds would go um, w- would also triple. So that women would lose a lot why, of their benefits. Why aren't the corporations willing to work with the people? Every time it's kind of like a kid one. The, the two main things that's killing our society today is education and medical and, and, and medical uh, insurance. You know, you 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 constantly keep raising the the uh, uh, um, tuition on these kids to go to college. Now it's just went up 5% again. And then you turn around, you say, oh, I can't, you, you, I wanna be able to have medical insurance, but I can't because you wanna give it to me, but every time I turn around, it's almost like a cable bill. It just keeps going up and up and well, up. There's no reason. Again, because well, of this victory and because of Obamacare, remember that Obamacare at as high as $80,000 of family income mm-hmm. um, had an enorm- has an enormous subsidy you, you barely pay twenty percent of the cost of the premiums, um, but why Medi- are they telling the people that that, uh, that all the premiums are going up on Obamacare? Well, because in some cases they have, particularly in cases where there's um, only a one single insurance company in some in which some was uh, what was that? I can't remember the insurance company, but they said we're going to raise Edna. it, Edna. Edna. and it's like, dude, you don't want to work with the people. You don't want people to have metal. You want everybody to walk around. With, with, with not being able to go to a care. Speaking of uh, not being able to go to a hospital, let's let's talk about the concessions. You know, Ernie, you were talking about being there for the formulation of the Tea Party. Uh, Tea Party now uh, under Caucus. under business as the Freedom Caucus. Yeah, it it it's like that you know horrible like insect ridden restaurant that is constantly getting C's and D's. So they just change the name of the place. They don't they don't change anything else. So uh, the Freedom Caucus is is now our D-rated restaurant, uh, formerly known as the Tea Party. And some of the uh, concessions that went into the American Health Care Act, you know, you're talking about not being able to go to a hospital. They would have did uh, the essential health benefits that are part of Obamacare, uh, basically itemizing. So, you know, the, the cost of the premium goes down. But, but certain, get, but certain features it. won't be available you in your health care you plan. Nothing. Like you, you won't be able to uh, go to the hospital. You won't be able to take yeah. an ambulance if you do go to the hospital. See, you won't be able to get outpatient I, care. I don't think you won't be able to get maternity uh, or newborn care. Prescription drugs right. would be taken off off the table. Lab services. Basically, you would be paying an insurance premium so that uh, you could go to the hospital on your own and have a doctor look at you and go, "Ooh, that looks like it smarts." The, that the, that was it. I'm not sure anything it, else. You're going to pay extra. That's right. And I, but I'm not sure that there's that that's an appropriate comparison because the Tea Party movement really was from the ground up, and this and the. Um, and the, the so-called freedom, those are just hard right fiscal double double conservatives, and they're ideologically based, and they're going to now have to face a much more educated electorate, and 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 they they are at risk politically, but they're not the, the Tea Party movement, as in the movement that killed that killed um, um, Trump Care, Trump Ryan Care, was was. Very much from the ground up. I mean, I, I work for an organization, Social Security Works, who fights for Social Security but also fights for retirement. And I've worked for AARP um, for many years. And what I saw in this instance was a very natural, very ground up movement that nobody expected. Here's, here's my question. I'm, I, 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 it's very sort of, uh, you know, you're, you're a basic uninformed voter, but, and, and, 